All right, we're back with module five and talking about hydration, really what I call the most important part of performance. You know, we've covered the macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. At the end of the day, if an athlete is not hydrated, it doesn't matter what the fuel they're putting in their body is, they will not be able to perform. So let's talk about that a little bit more in depth. Number one, again, proper hydration is as important, if not more, than the food choices themselves. And good message to remind athletes is drink early and drink often. Once you become dehydrated, even mildly dehydrated, it's hard to try to catch up. So making sure they, they maximize that hydration early on. It's not just right before the event itself, but all the way the hours leading up to it, and even the day before, is important. So water is the most important nutrient. Uh, minimum fluid loss is very minimally, as little as 1% even, can affect physical and mental performance. And think how that would be if you have an athlete who's trying to focus, maybe, maybe a baseball player trying to hit, trying to focus on the pitch, um, or any, any sport really, but a little bit of a, of a negative effect can have a huge performance detriment in the end. And again, dehydration outside of performance can certainly put athletes at risk for much more severe health issues as well. Now, athletes constantly risk dehydration. And like I said, it takes just a one to 2% of body weight loss to hinder performance. And put that into perspective, what is one to 2%? Well, you have a 200 pound athlete, that's a two to four pound weight loss, which isn't much. And in fact, this is an extreme example, but when I was working with a pro football guys, I was at the training camp. And there was a guy who weighed eh, around, he was big, bigger guy, 315 pounds. Well, during training camp one, one day, one performance, one two hour training, he lost about 13 pounds in that two hour period. And that was significantly more severe. Uh, he needed IVs, he needed to really, really help and get him back in track because then that completely affected him health-wise too. He had a, a raging headache that night. Even the next day, he was still recovering from that. But again, a little bit more severe. But even that small detriment can certainly hurt performance. And it's important to stress to athletes that weight loss during training, practice, or games is fluid losses. It is not fat loss. And I've heard this time and time again, and I've struggled to emphasize that. Um, I've, I've struggled to get that across to athletes, I should say, because they sometimes get excited to see that scale move. And especially in, in, in weight uh, specific sports like crew or like wrestling, but it is fluid losses. It is not fat loss when you're, when you're losing weight pre and post training. Now, are you hydrated? How do you know if you're hydrated? Well, have athletes weigh themselves pre and post workout without their clothes on. Because again, what they lose is from fluids specifically. The difference in that body weight is the fluid loss. And then what you have to educate them on is drinking two cups, about two cups of fluids for every one pound lost. Two cups of fluids for every one pound lost. Go back to that example I gave you with the athlete who lost 13 pounds. He couldn't physically do that with just fluids alone from drinking orally, he would have, that would be 13 times two, that would be 26 cups of fluids, not quite possible. Again, that was an extreme example, but this is a very, very important point. Every one pound athletes lose during performance, they should drink two cups. I mentioned in, in one of the earlier modules that I did the Ironman several years ago, and you know, it's very hot in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, where I live, and the Ironman is in August, so, it was again, even hotter. It was actually used to be in August. They recently moved it. But, but anyhow, a lot of our training occurred in the summer, a lot of our long training sessions. And what we would do when we would have long training sessions, we would actually have a kind of a point where we could actually stop over on the bike, the bike after our six, seven, eight hour events. And we would actually weigh ourselves in between every couple hours to make sure we were on track with our hydration. Most of the time we did great. Certainly sometimes we couldn't because it's hard to keep up with those massive amount of, of fluid losses you're, you're seeing on, on the, again, in extreme sports like that. Now, this is one of my favorite charts right here, and it's great to, to print out. It's in your manual. You'll see that, and you can print that out, hang that in the locker room, show that to athletes, hand that out to athletes or their parents. Um, when I was working with the pro football guys, we had this in all the locker rooms in front of the urinals, so they could see this hydration chart. Basically, to break this down, if your urine looks like colors one, two, or three, 
you're hydrated. Continue doing what you're doing. If it looks like anywhere from four down to eight, you are dehydrated. Again, a little bit of dehydration at number four, going all the way down to it is very, very dangerous, seven and eight, and you're at risk for very more, more severe uh, health issues. So again, print this out, put this around, show them, highlight these colors, because this is really important. I said you can weigh yourself pre and post, that's fine. But even more simple is looking at, the, at your urine color. In general, if it looks like pale lemonade, it's good. If it looks like apple juice, it is bad. You need to drink more. So again, focus on hydration, pre-play hydration. It's not just leading up to the event, but even all the way hours before. If it's first thing in the morning, again, the day before as well, and sipping fluids regularly. Every water break you have, depending on your sport, take advantage, don't bypass it. That was one of the things my coach told me with the Ironman is, and even when I was training and I did, I did do a marathon, she said, maybe sadly, you're not trying to win this event. You're simply trying to finish it and feel good and feel strong. Every single water break, stop, walk through it, like get off your bike or what have you. Take advantage of that because it's very easy to let that bypass you. Think about this with the athletes you're talking about. You know, in football, for example, every time out, they usually run out with, with bottles of water, depending on the, the, the team, or there's water on the sidelines. Encourage them to drink often, drink regularly, drink often. Uh, carry a water bottle during training. Um, so again, depending on the athlete, if you're working with runners, and I've done this myself, you can hide water bottles along the course. Drive the course first if you have a longer, longer run, hide some bottles so you can have fluids along the way. And then ideally aim for about one cup every 15 minutes or so during training. Again, drink early, drink often. It's really, really hard, if not impossible, to play catch up when you start to get mildly dehydrated. So you wanna stay ahead of the curve. Now, that doesn't mean over drinking. It is possible, um, although not very easy, but about one cup every 15 minutes should be sufficient. Now, if you're working with athletes, and it's the heat of the summer and you're living in an area where it's hot and humid, they may need even more than that. And listen to the body, again, looking at the urine color, looking at, um, looking at weighing yourself pre and post to get a baseline of where they're at in terms of their hydration, how much weight they're losing and so on. So drink to replace fluid losses, but not over drink. Again, it is possible to do that. Uh, drink before, during and after play. And then in general, plain water can adequately rehydrate the body for activities that are 60 minutes or, or less. And then once you start going over that with continuous activity, it's all about sports drinks to fuel the body. Give them the electrolytes they need. When you're sweating, you're not just losing fluids, you're losing electrolytes, things like sodium and potassium and so on. Sodium being the primary electrolyte you're going to lose when sweating which by the way is what leads to cramping typically. It's not potassium as most people should think and then immediately eat a banana. It's usually sodium. Sports drinks are designed to replenish what is lost. So over 60 minutes sports drinks, under 60 minutes water is usually sufficient. Again, if sports drinks are what it takes because they are more palatable, I have no problem with that at all for the right athlete. That being said, I don't think you know five and six year olds learning how to run around a, a soccer field, learning about the game. And I have a, you know, a six year old who you know, often can pick dandelions during the event. They need to rehydrate immediately with sports drinks. Uh, but for the right person, the right athlete, they certainly have the role. Follow your particular guidelines. If there's specific guidelines for the athlete, a lot of schools now have safety guidelines or coaches and strength coaches. So giving the regular water breaks, following the guidelines to make sure that your recommendations are on par with what's out there and making sure that you are meeting the needs uh, during training so athletes are hydrated, are healthy, and could perform at their peak. Again, as I had mentioned, fluids and hydration, this is one of the most important modules out of all of them because fluids that you take in are significantly more important than even the nutrients you eat. Okay, that is key and that is crucial. You can, you've probably heard, you know, you could last only a few days without fluids. You can last significantly longer without foods. Fortunately for most people, neither is really an issue, but it can happen. So we need to make sure we're hydrating early, hydrating often and hydrating properly. So here's some signs of dehydration. This is an important one, especially when you're on the field with athletes or in the gym or what have you. 
I'm not going to read the whole uh, slide here, but you can see some of the early signs, thirst and flushed skin and premature fatigue and so on. And the later signs include dizziness and confusion and weakness. And again, it can be very, very serious, ultimately to the point of, of death. Obviously, that's serious. We're going to try to prevent that, certainly, and even everything leading up to that so we can stay healthy, we can stay strong, and we can perform at our peak. So, summary for the hydration. Aim for at least half your body weight in ounces of water. If you weigh 200 pounds, that's about 100 ounces. 100 ounces is around 12 and a half cups. So there's eight ounces in one cup. Uh, and again, this may vary depending on training, depending on the heat, depending on urine color. That's a very, the first bullet up there is a very baseline bullet. Um, urine color is, is definitely a better assessment of hydration status. Like I've said several times, drink early and drink often to make sure you stay ahead of the curve and don't let yourself get or your athletes get behind the eight ball so that being said we're going to move on to the next module module six see you there